One of the things that I think led to Castro getting quite a bit of search about him was his answer on reproductive rights and reproductive freedom. So if we could go to video 12, I believe that's him talking about that topic. I don't believe only in reproductive freedom, I believe in reproductive justice. And you know what that means is that just because a woman, or let's also not forget someone in the trans community, a trans female, uh, is poor doesn't mean they shouldn't have the right to exercise that right to choose. And so I absolutely would cover the right to have an abortion. More than that, uh, everybody in this crowd and watching at home knows that in our country today, a person's right to choose is under assault in places like Missouri, in Alabama, in Georgia. I would appoint judges to the federal bench that understand the precedent of Roe v. Wade and will respect it. And in addition to that, make sure that we fight hard as we transition our healthcare system to one where everybody can get and exercise that right. Okay, so what was your response? Um, and in general, I would say, I mean, I think this was a good topic for him in terms of applause. But how did you think uh, he had not been polling particularly high? How did you think that he comported himself? I feel like there were a lot of key words that usually sound good, but honestly, for me, I did not know what was going on with that answer. Hmm. Yeah, I, well, I don't know about that. I felt as though he leaned into the answer in a, I, I actually thought he distinguished himself in, in a way that I wouldn't have anticipated. I mean, when he folded in a sort of transgender aspect, it's not one that I normally would associate with a woman's right to choose. On the other hand, he, he didn't shy from sort of leaning into this issue. He's, you know, what was he, he saying there though, with that point? Well, no, I mean, I have to, I, I'm still trying to twist my head to that place. Like, what are the issues? I, I, here's his point on, on uh, obviously on the justice part. Okay. Those people who have no money, Mm -hmm. Don't get the same options when Absolutely. it comes to right. Okay, so he was including the transgender community as those who could be economically depressed and not have that option. Gotcha. When it comes, I think beyond that, I don't, I can't, I don't see how the transgender community has the problems when it comes to a woman's right to choose. Well, I think that he, I mean, the way that he worded that in particular, I get what you're saying. But I think the idea was that's a community that, that very often faces discrimination when it comes to even being able to access not only certain procedures, especially like in the military, there's been big debates about that. But even having like regular medical care, that's a community that is often discriminated against. And so when he talks about reproductive mm -hmm. uh, justice and, and all of that, I think that he's talking about generally having substantive access to healthcare in a way that- Okay, so it's not really access to healthcare. He said something that doesn't match either of the things that you two are saying though. That sentence mm -hmm. that right there that we're all confused about was not what you two are saying. And I think that it matched more with Beto random Spanish uh -huh. than, because there are, people want you to actually help them and answer to what you're going to do that helps them not put two issues and just say things. I don't know, I didn't, the fact that we both come away from that and are saying, no, what I think he meant was, I well, felt like there was a way to have a very clear he said, answer there. Just to round off the point, when he said economic justice and he got big applause in the hall, I thought, oh, the hall is loaded with a lot of his people, clearly, because I don't really know what he meant. Uh, 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 when he said, was it? Reproductive justice. Reproductive justice, justice thank you, mm -hmm. reproductive justice. So, because I don't really know what he means right now, and then he went on to explain it, which is the appropriate thing to do. Uh -huh. But uh, uh, there's a point here, Brooke is making a point. There, apart from the requiring medical help in all sorts of different situations that might involve the trans community. It disconnected from the question of abortion rights, if that's what we're talking about. Yeah, There are answers, uh, the trans community does need our help. They would need the new president's help and even more so after the current president. And mm. that, I didn't oh. hear that. Well, what, why don't we go to uh, Anna and Emma, what did you guys think? Yeah, it's funny, um, Brooke. When he said economic justice, Jake and I both looked at each other and asked, what does that even mean, right? So you're right in that his messaging there um, needs some improvement. And I think that he wanted to touch on a different issue um, that could be affected, or, you know, the, the way transgender people are treated could be affected by uh, reproductive rights. But it seemed like he was trying to get two different issues covered in one answer. Right. And the message kind of got muddled uh, as a result of that. Yeah, you don't want to like, we don't want to be Republicans and just use buzzwords that appeal to a certain part of the base and just jumble them together to make some sort of jambalaya of democratic talking points. You want 
it to be a cohesive statement. And I would agree with you that it, it, it was not coherent in that way. I will say, though, um, and this was not only something that uh, Julian uh, Castro did. I, I felt like most candidates, with the exception of Warren and to some extent de Blasio, just wanted to like avoid answering specific questions and pivot toward, you know, prepared talking points. I saw that happen a lot and it drives me nuts. Like mm. we get it. You have issues you want to talk about. But, you know, one of the times it happened, just keeping it real, was Tulsi Gabbard's first question. Her first question had to do with pay equality. And she immediately started talking about the military. And I was like, why are we talking about the military right now? Like, and that's the thing. She's very strong when it comes to issues pertaining to the military and foreign policy, but it's just, it's a stretch to take a, a gender pay issue or question and then have this long answer about the military. You know here's, the, here's the only point on that, because I noticed it too, of course it was right at the <laughs> beginning, Anna, and I, I thought, well, there are 10 people on stage and they're thinking people are gonna lose interest after uh, who knows how long, maybe even 20 minutes, half hour. This is my shot. I'm going to tell these people, many of whom don't know who I am, who I am and what I'm about. And I kind of saw it in that context. Definitely what you're saying is 100% true. It was a trick and it wasn't even really that much sleight of hand. I mean, it was right in plain sight, but it did communicate the message she wanted, but clearly it didn't answer the question she was asked. Yeah. And look, to be fair to her, after that question, they didn't go back to her for what felt like an eternity. So I get it. There's so many people on stage and you want to stand out. But to give her credit, her answer on Iran and her answer on, uh, you know, Middle East wars was, I think, her strongest moment. Well, it was, this, I think, the strongest evisceration yeah. of one candidate in the debate where well, Tim Ryan was looked terrible based on how she went after him. On the go? Don't worry, we got you covered. You can still listen to TYT at our new podcast network. Find us on Apple Podcasts, the Google Play Store, or at tyt.com slash podcast.